This video is all about the least squares line of best fit method, which basically uses the following formulas to draw a line of best fit. Now there are actually two versions of this video. This is the Casio calculator version. There's also a Sharp calculator version. Now when people look at these formulas and also these symbols, they quite often become overwhelmed and, and think it looks too hard. The best way to tackle this is just to get straight into the example and do it one step at a time. So here we have example two. It says the table and scatter plot below represent a sample of 15 people. Each person gave their age and recorded the amount of time they were on the internet in one week. And what you'll notice is that a 12 year old, someone who's quite young, used the internet for 15 hours in the week. Whereas someone who's a bit older, someone who's 55 years, used a lot less internet time. They only used two hours. When we look at the scatter plot of this data here, we can see as people get older, they seem to be on the internet less. If we look at question A, it says use a calculator to find Pearson's correlation coefficient correct to four decimal places. So we're going to bring up our Casio calculator. The first thing we need to do is to clear anything that might have been stored on the calculator already. Above 9, we can see CLR for clear. So we go Shift, 9, and we want to clear all. Number 3 equals for yes, and AC key to, to get out of that screen. Now we need to go into statistics mode. So we click mode, statistics number 2. And we want to click number two, A plus BX. Now I want you to remember this A plus BX. This is going to come into play later on. In fact, I'm going to write it up on here and we're going to refer to this later on. So it was A plus BX. So we need to enter these data values into our calculator. And I want to point out that the first row on our table represents X and the second row is represented by Y. So when we bring up our calculator you'll see that we've got an X column and basically we enter all the values from the X row on our table into the X column on our calculator. So let's do that now. We've got 12, 15, 21 and so on. So 12, 15, 21 and I'm going to pause and finish this off. I would like you to do this with me. So we've entered all our values from the X row into our X column on the calculator. And I can scroll through with the arrow to check that I've put all the numbers in correctly. Now I want to put my Y values in. And these come from the second row here. So we have um, 15, 21, 21. So we'll just go across. And go 15, 21, 21, and I'm going to pause, finish this off. I'd like you to enter the same values as I am entering. All right, I've finished in entering all my values. We can scroll and have a look and make sure that we've entered all the values correctly if, if you need to. Now we need to find Pearson's correlation coefficient. So we'll click AC to get out of that screen. And we need to go shift number one because we can see stat written above number one. And we want to go into REG, which is number seven. And there is our correlation coefficient R, number three. So we get negative 0 0.8354. Negative 0 0.8354. Once you have your correlation coefficient, it's good to check it if you can. Let's look at our scatter plot. We can see that the scatter plot is going down, and we got a negative correlation coefficient, so that's a positive sign. We can also see that the correlation is reasonably strong, maybe somewhat moderate, and, and that kind of makes sense with the number that we got here. All right, we're going to move now on to question B. This is the harder question. Find the equation of the least squares line of best fit. This is where we need to go back to the screen with our formulas and also some symbols that might feel quite new to you. You'll notice we have R for Pearson's correlation coefficient. We know what that is. 
uh, Sx, which is the standard deviation of x, Sy, the standard deviation of y, x with a bar above it, the mean or average of x, y with a bar above it, the mean or average of y. So these are the values we need to find. And it's not as hard as you might think it is. We'll write them down. We've got R, Sx, Sy, x with a bar above it, and y with a bar above it. Now we already found R, the correlation coefficient, which was negative 0 0.8354. And we've got to find four more values, which are actually not too difficult to find because you can get them just on the calculator. We'll start with Sx, which is the standard deviation of X. To get that, we're going to go in stat mode again. So shift 1. And we'll go number five for VAR. Now, some calculators actually have something on there called SX. This one doesn't, but SX is equivalent to X sigma N minus one. So we're going to click number four and then equals, and we get 13.588, we'll round up to two. So that's the first one. So 13.588. Two. Now, some of you might be wondering, what is this all about? What is X? And when we look at the table above, X represented our top row. So SX basically means the standard deviation for our top row. And to be more specific, it's the sample standard deviation. So when we find SY, we're just finding the standard deviation for the second row or row Y. So we'll get out of here and go back in shift one into stat mode, VAR number five, and you'll see Y sigma N minus one, or some of you might have a calculator that just says SY. So that's number seven, and we get 5.6188. 5.6188. And finally, we need to find X bar and Y bar, and this is just the mean of X or the mean of the top row, and this is the mean or average of the bottom row. These are also found on the calculator. I'm going to go shift one again, VAR number five. We can see X bar number two, 34.066. Let's go seven, 34.0667. And then Y bar, shift one again, VAR number five, and Y bar is number five, and it comes out to 12, a nice whole number. You might have noticed that I've been doing my solutions to quite a number of decimal places, four decimal places. This is because I'm going to substitute these values into my formulas. And I don't want to round it to a small number of decimal places yet. I want to do it when I get my final solution. So let's go get our formulas, these two here. And we're just going to simply plug these values into our formulas. So we'll start by finding M. M just stands for gradient. And it's found by taking R, which is negative 0.8354. And we're multiplying R by the fraction SY over SX. So SY goes at the top. It's 5.6188. And we can see that SX goes at the bottom. And SX was 13.5882. Bringing up our calculator, I'm going to use the negative button. There we go, negative 0 0.8354. And we're going to multiply it by this fraction here. 5.6188 over 13.5882. Now, I prefer to use the divide button instead of the fraction button. 13.5882. And this comes out to negative 0.3454. We're now going to find C. C 
is our y intercept. So we'll start with y bar, which is 12, and then we're going to subtract m. Now m is our gradient from above, which came out to negative 0 0.3454. So we'll write negative 0 0.3454. And I'm going to put this in brackets. And the reason I'm doing this is so that we can tell the difference between the negative and the subtraction symbol. Next on our formula, we can see that we take m and we multiply it by x with a bar above it. So we're going to multiply this by 34.0667. So bringing up our calculator, 12 minus bracket negative 0 0.3454, close our brackets, times 34.0667 equals and we get 23.7, let's do it to two decimal places, 23.77. Now the reason we're now doing it to only two decimal places is because we've found the final solution to our formula here. In fact, when we found the solution to m, we really want to put this to a shorter number of decimal places as well. So instead of four decimal places, let's put it to two. Let's put it to negative 0 0.35 because this is a final solution to one of our formulas. I needed to put it to four decimal places at first just because I was substituting this value into the next formula here. Now to finish off, we need to look back at something we did in the linear functions topic. And it was the gradient intercept formula, which is y equals mx plus c. Sometimes I teach this formula as y equals mx plus b. It doesn't really matter which letter you use, but we've stated that the y intercept is c, so we need to make this c. So we're just going to substitute values in here. m, or our gradient, is negative 0 0.35, and c, or our y intercept, is 23.77. So when we substitute these values in, m was negative 0 0.35 and c was 23.77. So now we have the equation of our line of best fit. Now I mentioned earlier that I wanted you to remember this a plus bx thing that we saw on the calculator. And I'll, I'll show you why now. If we bring up the calculator, get out of the screen, this time I'm going to click the stat button above the one again, so shift one, and I'm going to click the REG number seven, or the reg, and you'll see we've got A and B here. So let's find out what A is, number one, and it comes out to 23.77. So A is 23.77. What is B? Shift 1, reg number 7, B number 2, is negative 0 0.35. The negative 0 0.35x. And some of you might have noticed that these two values here are the solutions for M, our gradient, and C, our y-intercept. So A is your y-intercept, and B is your gradient. So this is a really nice shortcut that you can do on the Casio calculator, but not on the Sharp calculator. Now, it works a lot better if you switch it around. Rather than A plus BX, we write it as BX plus A. And then when we substitute values, B was negative 0 0.35, and A was 23.77, and you'll see that now it looks a lot more like our gradient intercept formula. All we need to do is write Y equals at the beginning. Now there's one more step I'd like to do. I'm just going to make a bit of room here, and I just want to show you this equation. I want to change something, and that is because when we talk about our age, we're not always going to call that X. We might want to call that A. Or age and when we talk about our 
internet usage, we might want to use H instead of Y, H for the number of hours per week. And then we want to change it. We want to change Y for H and we want to change X for A because it makes a bit more sense to do that. So we'll replace our Y with an H, keep the numbers the same, X will change to an A, and now we've got a really nice formula to work with when doing our least squares line of best fit. We'll now move on to question C. C wants us to draw the least squares line of best fit on the scatter plot at right. And when you draw it, you just want to put down two points and you want them to be quite far apart. So we'll pick a point where our age is 10 and we'll pick a point where our age is 60. Just drawn up a table of values to help us with this. We only need those two points. So we'll now bring up our calculator. We're not going to worry about showing working here. And we'll plug our A value of 10 into our equation. So we've got negative 0 0.35. So negative 0 0.35 multiplied by our age, 10 in this case, plus 23.77. And it comes out to 20.27. Now we're just going to round that to 20 because when you're graphing things, you really don't need decimal points. Uh, next we're going to substitute 60 in. So we're going to go negative 0 0.35 again, negative 0 0.35. And this time we're timesing by A, which is 60, and then adding 23.77. And this comes out to 2.77. We'll just round that to 3. And now we're going to plot these two points. So we've got the point 10, 20. So 10, 20 would go about here. And then the other point 63 would go about here and then I'm going to draw a line that connects the two points. All right, so we've got our line there. We'll even put arrows at the end to show that they can go on forever. And when you look at it, it makes a lot of sense. That looks like a really good line of best fit for the scatter plot. We'll finish off by doing question D now. It says use the equation to predict the internet usage of someone aged five. So all we're going to do is we're going to substitute a for 5 this time because they're 5 years old. And we'll work that out and that will show us the amount of internet usage a 5 year old should use or we're going to predict the amount that they should use. So we have negative 0 0.35 times 5 plus 23.77 it comes out to about 22. 22 hours and that makes sense because when we look at our scatter plot a five-year-old will be somewhere out here and you can see it's going to go somewhere above the, the 20 here. Now this is an example of extrapolation because our line of best fit only goes between uh, 10 and 60 on our graph and ours is over here so we would normally have to extend our line of best fit to find this value. Anyway, that concludes our video on example two. Remember to read the description below for links to workbooklets that relate to this video.